Here is a thorough guide on exactly how to grow a successful Roblox game in 2024. Now, this isn't going to be some niche BS video. I'm going to give you actual tips on how to be successful coming from a pretty successful developer myself. Anyways, let's get to the video. The first, and in my opinion, the most important rule to follow is the game is genuinely well-made and fun. Who would want to play a game that is not fun or well-made? If your game is full of bugs and it is not fun to play, nobody's going to play it. It's that simple. The way you can overcome this is by extensive bug checking, you know, taking your time with the game, who would have thought, and making your game have a point to it. It should be straightforward enough to where a goddamn toddler could understand how to play it. Now, so you guys understand a little better, I drew up a little example here. Here on the left, we have, you know, a good version of a game. You're shooting somebody, the bullet hits them, and they die. That's how guns should work. Now, on the right here, we have what should not happen when you're shooting somebody and your goddamn bullet deflects and hits you, and you, you know, you're dead, you're gone. That is not how the game should operate at all, unless it's a mechanic in the game but that's just that's just an example out of many things that could happen that could end up screwing you over so you need to make sure you extensively check for bugs in your game because people will not play it otherwise the second tip is making sure your game is easy to understand like i said a toddler should be able to load up into your damn roblox game and play it and this can include well-made guides instructions etc in order to get new players up to speed with existing players there should not be that steep of a learning curve because nobody will play it a good example of this is something like jailbreak that game is you know in my opinion it's pretty easy to understand because i see six-year-olds playing it because otherwise it wouldn't be infested with six-year-olds and that's exactly what you want you want it to be easy to understand to where six-year-olds are playing your game now the third point is your game should be self-sufficient and what does this mean you might ask well self-sufficient means the game can run and support itself the players should be able to do everything within the game and this also ties in with being bug free because bugs are only going to prevent players from having fun and therefore have players leave your game. Now number four and honestly this is more important than any of the other points I've mentioned is player feedback. Once you start getting players, you need to talk to them and understand what they want because these are the people who are going to point out what they want to see in the game and possible bugs. So it's only a win-win and this will allow you to update the game more and make it even more fun than it already is. And that's the only way you get new players coming in. This will keep your game alive and updates bring in more players. This will keep your game alive and it will prevent it from being boring because who wants to play a boring game? Nobody. A good example of this is my gun mechanics I made in a couple of my games. Now here I am dressed as Andrew Tate, and let's say Andrew Tate wants to kill some of these dummies here. I'm gonna pull out my gun, and I'm gonna load some rounds right into his head. Yeah, he's gone. He's dead. Yeah, he's dead. Now, how does this relate to the video, you might ask? Because before I had any of this, I had very, very shitty gun systems. They were awful. But I did have players in my game, and those players reached out to me, and they told me what they wanted to see, such as the blood splatters you see here, the shells, the ragdoll mechanics, all of it I got from player feedback. And that only made my game more successful, and that is exactly what you need to do if you want to be successful, is listen to your players. The fifth point in this video is marketing. Marketing is very, very important because your game will not even get out there if you do not market correctly. This can include advertisements on Roblox, word of mouth, or even videos that you post online showcasing your game. And just like your game, these advertisements need to be well made or nobody's even gonna click on them. Like which one of these pictures is more likely to get clicked on? I don't even have to answer that because it's so obvious. So you need to make sure your advertisement is good enough to where people would wanna click on it. And once they play your game, your game is also made well enough to where they wanna stay in the game and keep playing. Sometimes with marketing, it will take money to make money, but as long as you have good advertisements and a good game, this is a perfect investment because it will only profit you. Smart marketing can lead to a great investment. Now the last but most overlooked point of this video is consistency. I see so many games fail because of this. People, people see their game doing pretty decently or maybe not even good at all and they just give up. That is not the way to go at all. This is what separates the successful developers from the failures. I had at least three games before I made my successful Chicago game that flopped. They absolutely flopped. They were horrible. Everything was broken in them, but I kept trying. I took those failures and I took the knowledge from how can I fix this? What can I do to make it better? And I put it into new games until I perfected it. Failure is inevitable. You need to just suck it up, take the failure and learn from it. Use the failures to improve your skills and make a great, great, excellent game like i said this separates the successful people from the failures and you do not want to be a failure so stay consistent keep your willpower up and i will see you guys in the next video Mwah. thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe <laughs>